Good morning. The conversation that we're having this morning, broadly, is about innovation in arts, education, and technology. I would like to talk to you about a very important part of that innovation engine, the people, the me and you in that engine. Success in the next 10 minutes is to have one of you have a life-changing experience. So what could I say to change your thinking in a way that would profoundly affect the rest of your life and invite you into this innovation engine? I'd like to start by telling you a little bit about me and my journey, and then we'll see whether or not the learnings that I've had have relevance for you, and that my observations, perhaps, will provoke you in a way that you have not been provoked before, and you will join me on this journey. NW at 45 equals five. Yes, I am an engineer. <laughs> this equation meant a lot to me for many, many years. I grew up in a very modest part of Pittsburgh, the Lincoln Larmer area. Some people might say it's a very modest part of Pittsburgh. I had the good fortune of having great parents, a very strong home environment, decent work ethic, and some things went my way. And by the time I had reached my mid-30s, I was in a very comfortable position. I had lofty goals for my next 30 years. NW at 45 equals five was my shorthand way of collectively expressing the goals I had across multiple dimensions in my life. And they included retiring early. And for those of you that have figured it out, the alpha numeric stands for net worth at 45 equals $5 million. Not a lot of money now, but it was a lot of money then. I wrote this alpha numeric everywhere. It was on my calendar. It was on my address book. I doodled it during meetings. I also, in my early 30s, was into hiking. And I took this set of goals with me down into the base of the Grand Canyon. This hiking trip was not for the faint of heart. I had done some moderate hiking trips, but on this trip, I went down with experienced hikers, and we did what was referred to as extreme hiking. It included hiking the Narrows, a three-foot-wide trail that is better described as a ledge. If you could imagine being on a ledge that is three foot wide, too narrow for you to walk straight ahead, that you have to navigate by stepping sideways with a sheer rock wall in front of you that extends up 15 or 20 stories, and on the other side of that three feet, a cliff that drops into a chasm so far down that all you see is darkness, but you can hear the roar of a raging underground river. I had a lot of thoughts while I was on this trail, including, <laughs> <laughs> I chose to be here. <laughs> I didn't have to do this. Another thought was the possibility that I might not make it out of the canyon. All these lofty goals, still be sitting out there yet to be done. I returned to my cushy corporate job and wrestled with this idea that I was waiting, waiting for my future. But I had a new sense of urgency. What if it had ended in the canyon on that day? All those unfulfilled goals haunted me for a little while in my Dilbert-like setting. And one day, I accepted the fact that the path that I was on was not going to take me to where I wanted to go. And I quit. You should talk to my wife about this. <laughs> Leaving a $10 billion corporation and joining a zero revenue company, a startup company. The experience in the startup company were life-changing for me. It's the point in my life when things really got interesting. The startup company had a great first year, and then it crashed and burned in the second. 
Not only did my startup company drop down like a rock, but the overall job market crashed, the housing market crashed, and the stock market also responded in kind. It took me several years to climb out of the hole that I created for myself with my wife, two children, and, and the dog that I promised my daughter she would get when she was 10. We moved from a very comfortable house in Buckhead to a two-bedroom apartment. My goals, including the prospect of net worth at 45 equals five, retiring early, now felt everything but attainable. And then one day, I was looking at my retirement list, and it struck me. There were a lot of things on that list that did not require waiting until I retired. That was some 12 years ago, and since then, I have truly been blessed. Most of the things I wanted to do when I retired, I have now done, and my journey continues. So where is the big idea in this? I feel like I had the privilege of reaching into my future and pulling it to my present, but only by doing something really scary. And by pulling my future into my present, I also find now that I have room to do things that I never would have thought possible before. If I may share some observations from my journey. Getting the big things right, I came to appreciate that of the hundreds of decisions that I make every week, only a handful will really make a difference. Little economics. I also came to understand that if I wanted to be a difference maker in my life or in the life of others, I had to know the difference between when I was just clipping coupons or really working on something that was going to drive significant value. <clears throat> embracing risk and embracing security. A piece of hiking advice that I've always held near and dear, I try and use this in lots of dimensions of my life, is that you should never find yourself with both feet in the air at the same time. <laughs> Take a moment and think about that. The first time I was told that on a trail, I didn't quite get it. <laughs> if you're going to take risk, you also have to take precautions. The idea of embracing risk and security rolls right into another observation, and this one is one I learned from my kids. I have two children who are now out of my house. When I would ask them, do they want cookies or cake? Do you want to go to your grandmother's house or to the movies? They would quite often come back with the answer that some of you as parents have heard. I want both. We as adults have learned not to ask for both. I now keep an eye out for when life throws at me artificial forced choices. And I look for opportunities to say, I want my cake and eat it too. A couple of shots on goal. Most of the things that I've worked on since I left corporate America did not work out. Fortunately, the couple of things that worked out more than made up for all those things that didn't. And an important part of my journey has been creating a portfolio of possibility, positioning myself for multiple shots on goal. This idea of embracing risks and security rolls right into a thought that extends into all of our future. Let's start at the bottom of this slide and work our way back up to the top. What if I could tell you with absolute certainty that you will get to a point in your life when your health trumps everything else? That you will likely run out of time before you run out of money? Would you change anything about the way you're living your life today? I have reached that reality. I know that my health and my time are much more important than my money. And I try and manage my life that way. The time that I have for my family, for my friends, the time that I have for myself. And this last one, moving from the serious to the light, is a fun one for me. Could it be that the 12-month calendar is obsolete? 
annual reports, annual performance reviews, annual goal setting. I have started thinking about my time in smaller increments, and my goal is to get the dog years. Can you imagine how far behind me you're going to get if I'm successful in having seven years for every one year that you have? Something to think about. <laughs> so you put all this stuff together, and you get a list that looks like this. This list of observations in my world on the venture capital side of things is very similar to the recommendations that we give to entrepreneurial companies, to entrepreneurs. Get the big things right. Don't get distracted by the little things. Embrace risk and security. Look for opportunities to take both avenues. Couple of shots on goal, extremely important. People who are in the entrepreneurial world have heard the term pivot. Future mind, start with the future in mind. Be in a learn fast mode. Sometimes people call it fail fast, I like to call it fail forward. Extremely important. These competencies for invention and reinvention have been very important for me. I've applied them and they've worked. Perhaps they will work for you. Two recommendations, one for over 30, one for under 30. For those of you who are, who are over 35, old folks like me, make a list of the things you would like to do when you retire and then don't wait. For those of you who are under five, 35, list the things you'd like to do over the next five years and then explore them passionately. Young folks, you don't have to know what your passion is, but you do have to be looking for it. Take 30 minutes, whether you're over or under 35, and create your first draft. Do it today, and tomorrow, get after it. It's simple, it's quick, it's eminently doable. If you decide to join me, drop me a note. I'd love to hear about your journey. Thank you.